Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. We've got another exciting day planned today, another day of what I'm going to call big change because following the construction of the feedlot we had done in the last episode, we are doing a little bit more work with the animals, sorting a few more things out with them and making just a few more changes uh, to better run our operation, make it a whole lot more efficient. So we're down here, this is field 195, and down near the bottom of the map we've got our corn planted around the outside of the fields. In here we've got 50 head of Angus, and they're getting near to maturity, I think they're worth about $3,000 per animal at the moment. We're actually going to go and get these sold. I was contemplating moving them into the feedlot, and... Uh, having them over there because the reason for that is this is a dairy shed and we can produce milk out of it but we don't have any dairy cattle in there so we're going to go and actually bring the brown swiss which are over on the far side of the map at the other yard and bring them over here they're going to go into this shed so i thought let's get these ones sold we've already ordered uh, another 150 or just short of 150 144 head of cattle uh, that's limited by the truck numbers we can carry 48 in the truck as can the carriers we are using to deliver them but we've ordered another 144 cattle and they are on their way to the farm to go into the feedlot so I thought let's just start off with animals all of the same age and we'll get the proceeds from these ones to go and pay for them so we're going to run these down to the animal dealer get them sold then we're going to head on over to the other side of the map go and pick up the brown swiss bring them back over here and get them set up in here so we can get some milk off it so that is the plan there's also some other changes at the yard we had a little bit more work done on the feedlot and around the yard that we will go and talk on and i've also got some plans for some more equipment upgrades in the future and uh, probably sooner rather than later but i am mindful We've still got some debt, we've got some uh, money in the bank but not a huge amount so we're going to have to look at what the best way to do that is. Part of it does work with uh, or does include this feed mixer which we haven't actually used yet but we'll cover that off in just a little while. So I'm going to jump in the truck, get loaded up and head on over to the animal yard. Alright so there you go, you can see we've got 48 in the trailer now and $3,000 per head so just short of $150,000 off these, uh, there's two more that are going to be sitting here, little stragglers and you can see them over there in the yard now that we've got things loaded up uh, but of course that is the downside to the way we set things up, we set up with 50 and can only carry 48 in the trailer so I'm not sure whether we'll sell those or leave them over here, probably not the best idea to leave uh, beef cattle in with your dairy herd so we'll probably have to come and sort them out and get them taken out and uh, get them sold as well but we're going to jump in the road here going to head on and make our way down to the animal dealer and uh, get these sold get some money off them so we've made it down here to the animal dealer we're just going to get ourselves backed up into the loading dock there and uh, get these cattle off loaded 48 head three thousand dollars a head so we will be just short of hundred fifty thousand dollars off these so they've really uh, matured over the time and uh, definitely going to bring us in a decent amount of income we'll just back up in here we will get right up against the loading dock just for a little bit of realism there probably not quite as centered as we should but if we pop in there you can see we've got our angus on this side we're going to transfer all 48 and sell them for a grand profit of hundred and forty four thousand dollars so pretty much back to where we started before we bought the extra head so uh, that's not bad using those to pay for that so we're going to carry on we are going to head on down to the other side of the farm and go and pick up those, pick up those brown swiss cows and bring them on over into that pasture and get them set up down there they should have some food yeah, there's still some in there uh, we are going to have to leave a little bit of food behind when we pick them up from the yard they are in from the uh, barn they're in at the moment but uh, we'll just have to write that off as a little bit of a loss it was a bit of poor planning on my part but We'll live with it, uh, we've got plenty of other commodities back at the main yard to make plenty more food. So let's get down there and get them picked up. So we've made it down here to the barn with the brown swiss cows, you can see them, they all look very comfy out there. And they're going to go for a little bit of a truck ride, so we'll pop over here, see if we can find ourselves. The dialogue should be right about there and we will grab the maximum we can, 48 again of course get those moved and put into the trailer and we'll take those over to the other barn now you're probably wondering what is going to happen with this farm we did talk about it last time we are actually going to sell this i know we've got the alfalfa here but as we've shown alfalfa is not actually of any use to us in our maize plus mixtures the hay is not recognized and it's not really of any value we can buy hay just as cheap so we're probably better off having more grass we do have to come over here we do have the uh the whole crop 
Disco here, or Direct Disc header here for the Forage Harvester, so we probably have to come over and pick that up, because at the moment I don't have any intention, as much as I wanted to, of actually doing any uh, any whole crop silage. So we'll see, we'll take it back over to the yard, but that could be up for sale if anyone was interested in looking. But we do have a few other things we're going to talk about in just a little bit, and uh, put out a few opportunities, and ask if there is any that could come in return. So we'll worry about that in just a little while. Let's jump in here. Take another cruise, leave the two cows there on their own, and uh, we'll go and get these ones over into the barn. So back over here at the barn with the dairy cows, we'll just jump into the menu. You can see here we've got our 48 in the trailer. I'm going to select those and move them into there. And then we will grab our two, Angus, and uh, get them out of there because we don't want them to be doing any crossbreeding or anything like that. So we'll get those down, we'll get them sold, and we'll get the other two over here. So next time you see us, we will have uh, done both of those tasks, and we'll probably be back at the yard having a talk about what we are having planned down there. We're well, just arriving back here at the yard. We've got all of the animals where they're meant to be. Two more sold and two more over there uh, in the barn. But as you'll see, first thing you'll notice in our changes we've increased the width here of our entrance we'll just get out of that car's way just have a quick look around here we had a tree cut down there on the right and we've really splayed this entrance out so we can try and avoid all the issues we've had with turning in and out that's really made a big difference we've adjusted the auto drive course and everything like that to try and get that working much much more efficiently much more better for us so that is the first of our changes we'll come down here and you'll start to see the next of them as well so we've made a few more additions here into the feedlot. We've got some uh, water troughs in there. We've also got some movable fences in there for shelter. And as well as that, we've actually put some loading docks and loading ramps and uh, holding pens and everything here on the end. So there is a way that we can get our cattle loaded in and delivered into each of them. Otherwise, it was uh, going to be a little bit impossible. Of course, this is just for uh, realism. We can't use the triggers. Well, the triggers for the feedlot aren't on the side here. Uh, they are... Well, not on the end sorry they are down the sides so we can't quite do it properly but uh just to give the farm a little bit more of an authentic feel we've gone and done those i worked with the constraints i had i realized that the shape and layout of them probably isn't exactly what you'd do normally but uh it has worked for us one of the other comments i had in the last video here with the feedlot was the trigger for the manure so i have put down the manure extension triggers that came with the manure pits from 46 mods so we're just gonna have to wait and see whether that is all close enough that we can pick up all the manure out of the feedlots we'll just have to wait and find out i'm not actually sure whether that's going to work or not but that is sort of the main crux of the changes we've had here our silage has fermented so we are going to be able to lift those lids up off the bunkers take the covers off there and start to use that silage once we've run out of the grass bales down there or the silage bales down there and then if we just come over here one final little addition we've been talking about for a while is we have gone and added in a fuel full point so that is here for us to be able to refuel from it doesn't have any in it yet we do need to get a delivery of diesel uh, but we'll organize that and get that filled up but we do have a little fuel point there now so we don't have to worry about running all the way over to the uh, fuel station every time we need to fill up so that is uh, where we're at so we've been talking about some other changes we've been thinking about making here or looking at making and being mindful of how much money we have how much debt we have and what we're going to be doing to maximize that so we're going to have a little bit of equipment come up for sale on auction one will be the uh, disc mower for the front of the forage harvester brand new never used so if anyone was interested in that please make me an offer in the comments that will be for sale and i'll make sure we have a lineup for that and uh, we might just put a little community post up and people can bid on it or do something like that just to have a little bit of fun the other one will be the other of the small feed wagons we've got there uh, we've used this one quite a lot but the other one that is over at field 195 pretty much brand new again we'll be putting that one up for auction and getting rid of that i am actually on the fence as to whether we keep both and the reason is the truck works really well and we'll be keeping that because I think that's going to be the most efficient way for feeding the cows at the three different uh, barns. But we're just going to have a look. We've got another feed mixer we're going to look at buying. So taking a look here under animals where all the feed mixers are. We've got a few modded ones in here. But one we're looking for right down here is the Big Mega Mammut. Now this is $53,000. Comes with a capacity of 64,000 litres. So that is more than the truck and trailer unit has which will be fantastic for using down here in the feedlot. We'll be able to get that loaded up and uh, get it running around on a little bit of a chain going back and forth between the feed troughs and our feeding loading points. So I think that would be a fantastic addition, $53,000. So that's not actually too bad for us. 
But the issue is the 250 horsepower requirement. Now we just take a look at our existing tractors. We've got the Kubota and the John Deere 168 and 146 horsepower respectively. And in our large tractors, the T8 and the Versatile, they're both over 400 horsepower. So we don't really have a tractor that sits in that middle range. So I'm really in the market to try and find something in around that 250 to 300 horsepower range. So I'm looking to see what is out there in the used market. If anyone has a tractor that they've had on their saves that they want to get rid of, that they would be willing to sell to me and send up to Chilliwack, please again let me know in the comments because I would be dead keen to have a look at it and potentially purchase it. So long as it's been well looked after and cleaned, that is my one proviso as I stand here looking at a very dirty truck. So that is a couple of our big changes we're looking at making here, upgrading our feeding wagon and also upgrading our, or purchasing an additional tractor. Now that's not the end of the changes we are going to be making. We've got the two Maya forage boxes here and if you recall when we last did the silage harvest with these we had a great deal of issues with these front axles so again these are both going to be cleaned up and put on the market to sell so if again if anyone is interested in buying a couple of well-loved well-used forage boxes you can see the issues you've seen the issues you know what issues they come with please again i'll put that in a post and you can make me an offer or drop something in the comments let me know what you'd be prepared to pay for them what we're going to be replacing these with well we still need a side discharge to work with the blow up correctly and appropriately and uh, the Moria forage boxes from again 46 mods here they have a uh, fixed axle one here without the tandem steer it's just a drawbar which will work much much better we won't have the issues and still can come with the side discharge quite pricey we're looking at 75,000 and uh, there's options in here as well which pushes it up even just the unload mechanism which we have to have adds an extra twelve to fifteen thousand dollars on it so uh we can put a higher side on it as well doesn't change the capacity so we probably wouldn't go and do that but these are what we're looking at buying so again a little bit of money needs to go into those so we will be looking to sell our old forage boxes here so any offers will be greatly accepted well now of course we've talked a lot about what our plans are and what we're wanting to achieve but the main focus is we're cattle farmers and here are our new cattle arriving in here for the feedlots. So we've got three trucks coming in. I've come from a little bit further afield than our local dealer. Uh, we had to order them from a little bit further and here they are. It's a good test actually of our new yard entrance and uh, turn in there seemed to work okay. So we'll get those all unloaded and put into the barns. There should be, if my maths is correct, there should be 144 total, uh, 48 in each truck. So I'm looking forward to getting these in there and uh, seeing some more animals in our feedlot. It's going to be quite an exciting step in our next stage of our progress. There we are, third truck coming in as we speak. Nicely done. That worked out pretty well. So we'll go and get these all unloaded and uh, we will then have to have a look at our feed requirements. Uh, we might leave them just for a little bit, let them settle down after their long trip. And uh, we've got some other work we need to go and get on to. The oats over the road needing harvesting so we might go and try and make a start on those not sure if we'll get through them but uh, we do need to go and get into that so let's head on down and go and get these unloaded well look at that that looks pretty cool just pan around here we've got two truckloads of angus so that would be uh, 96 on this side and on the other side we went for the limousines and we've got one truckload of those so 48 limousines we've split them across each of the feedlot pens that we built so that they are sort of evenly spaced across those which will work out pretty nicely means we'll have to feed them all individually but that doesn't matter we'll be able to run along the side there and set up some auto drive hopefully to get that feed working out pretty well they look all pretty comfortable in there enjoying their surroundings wandering through the water trough and the fence and whatever else there might be in there as decoration but uh, we'll just look past that little fact all right well I guess we can let the truck drivers head off now. They can go back to wherever they're going and go and get on to their next job. And uh, we'll need to do exactly the same, which is, other than feeding this lot, is to go and get the combine out and go and make a start on the oats. It was like a long time since we last drove a combine here in Chilliwack, but it is time to jump into the New Holland, the twin rotor, get it all cranked up and off over into the field. All looks pretty good looking at the repair bar and the fuel. I don't think we need to worry about topping any of that up. So we're just going to get this taken over. We're going to come over and shuffle a little bit of machinery around. We need to get the grain carts 
as well as the header get that over there and then we'll have to take a truck over as well to run the corn or the corn the oats back over here into the bins and get that all going as well so uh, a little bit of setup to do but we'll get that organized and we will be ready to make a start very very soon well I think everything is geared up and ready to go we've just brought the truck over it's going to run auto drive back to the silos for us we do have an auto drive course set up for the grain cart we need to get the field cut open before we can start that uh, so we also need to unfold the harvester so we'll get that unfolded get those tops there on the hopper all folded up to give us that extra bit of capacity and we should now be all ready to go there we are turned on we'll head lowered down and we will get into these oats now First things first, need to make sure we are dropping our straw swath, which we're not, so we'll change that over. Let's have a look. Has that done it? Go forward a little bit more, and hopefully, there we are, we're getting a straw swath off, because we do want to be able to collect our straw off this field and use it to make some straw bales, so we can pad out our mixture, make our maize and corn maize and uh, grass maize, grass silage go just that little bit further when we're making our food mix so uh, this is all pretty good we're going to set up a GPS course as well while we're running along here uh, so we'll create an A point and also a B point and that'll give us a nice straight edge along this side of the field we're already at 10% full so we're not going to get a huge yield well I mean it's going to be a good yield I'm not going to complain but uh, it's not going to mean we're going to have to be having too many issues with grain carts we are just going to have to manage that just a touch when we get time to uh, particularly like we've just experienced also on Hunter Indiana with FSG opening up headlands can be a little bit of a tricky proposition here when you are harvesting so what we might do I know we've made this into quite a big field and in fact we'd probably actually be better going uh, on long ways across the field that way up and down it that way rather than across here so I might yet even change our GPS heading and uh, turn it 90 degrees and do that in the other direction we will wait and see but we're just going to carry on along here jump into a little bit of a time lapse and uh, we'll see you once we've made a bit more progress.
Just a finishing off our third headland pass around this field uh, and I think we might just about call that quits for today in here or at least for this episode. This is uh, nice and open now but that is going to take us a long time to get through the remainder but it's going well we're going to have a massive straw. The amount of straw we're going to bale up off this is going to be astounding. Now I've been thinking about it as we've been going around what we might do next time. We might actually set the combine up on course plate to do the remainder of the field. Uh, to do the up and down rows and that will give us the opportunity then to use course play if we wish for uh, bailing a little bit later on and uh, we can just double up on loading or whatever it might be because we are I expect going to have a lot of straw bales to get up and take off this field but we'll just get around here make sure we finish off this third pass and that will also mean we can bail what we want to on these outside headland passes or not on the headlands we could completely ignore them and just set the combine on some up and down rows and then the baler will follow along with those. Then we won't have any issues with the headlands already being bailed or anything like that. So I think we'll just go and park this up over here on the edge of the field. We've got our grain cart back. They are unloading. The truck's been off at least once, I think. We'd have to actually have a look in our, uh, in our silo and see how much oats we've already got over there. And yes, must be one trip, 35,000 litres that has been taken over there. So at the moment, not worth a great deal, $500. But if we have a look in time saving stock check, uh, 740. So already we've got $25,000 worth of oats sitting in storage. So that's not bad. Uh, just while we're here, we've got a lot of milk again, 96,000 litres of milk that we need to get taken off and uh, deposited. So that will be something else to do next time. And I just see in the background, we've parked in the way of the org wagon so we'll just back up and let them get back to where they want to be put the header down there and uh, turn things off and leave that for next time so as we said that has been a good start there in that field I'm very excited to get here into the oats and obviously get some straw off the field as well as get some money which we will get eventually when we get the chance to sell the oats we just turn around here you can see our corn if you probably noticed it that is pretty much ready to be chopped and uh, made into some silage so we'll be getting into that very very soon as well we do need to sort out all those items we talked about earlier uh, the first being the forage boxes to be able to get in and do those because I don't want to be running around using the ones we had so I will put a post up, I will leave a pinned comment in the video to uh, invite offers of tender I suppose or uh, bids on what you might want to buy of my equipment. I will put a post and a photo up as well and uh, just list what there is for sale because I'd dearly love to get rid of it, raise some money and uh, be able to buy some of that new equipment. So next time we'll be back here finishing off the harvest. We're going to have some animals to feed. Uh, what else are we going to have to do? There's always something to do. If we get done enough, we'll be baling some straw. Uh, we could even get into chopping some silage, but I don't think that will be in the next episode yet. This is going to be our focus, along with keeping the animals happy and selling some milk. We do have a lot of milk, like we said, to sell. So again, that's a whole lot more income. So it's always good. It's always good. I have actually been considering, and just before we go, I have considered buying the dairy uh, and that might be something we branch out into because uh, it is a little bit of a issue at the moment the dairy is blocking up any more uh, purchase so our only option is the Costco which seems to be at a reasonably similar price but uh, it's not ideal so maybe we'll look at branching out and adding a little bit of production into the side business we're making enough milk we might as well try and make some money off some of the side products we could be making rather than feeding the middleman so Lots and lots to consider, lots and lots to do, and I'm still really enjoying this series, as I hope you are as well. So as always, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that episode, and I'll catch you in the next one.